I used to think that a single video of a UFO would be the pinnacle of UFO evidence. Of course I was wrong. Cameras can be deceiving and the ability to create convincing hoaxes is only growing. And almost every day there are videos posted to YouTube that claim to have captured seemingly physics defying UFOs. Usually somewhere in the comments there's a prosaic explanation about mylar balloons, out of focus bugs, Chinese lanterns, or other explanations that seem plausible but Without more information than the video gives us, there's really no way to know for sure what's going on, and not much follow-up investigation that can happen. Rarely are there videos of aerial phenomenon taken from multiple people at different angles with no readily available explanation. Earlier this month, one of these rare events happened. On August 17th, many people took videos of strange orbs appearing and disappearing over the skies of Punta Arenas, Chile. These dancing orbs may not look incredibly impressive on video, but they must have made quite the impression in person for multiple people to have turned on their phone cameras and record and post these videos. On that same day, in Sao Paulo, Brazil, someone also captured and posted what seems to be the same phenomenon. Some claim that these videos are just showing a rare phenomenon where birds will appear as orbs on a cloudy day when the sun hits them just right. It's hard to disprove this idea, but I am very skeptical of it. The orbs seem to come in and out of existence, and the Sao Paulo video is against a blue sky. The fact that these objects were recorded by multiple people at different locations also seems to contradict this explanation. On the other hand, there is evidence of high energy phenomenon taking place in the area. Take this image, taken on July 14th, 2017, from the Visible Infrared Imaging Radiometer Suite on the SUMI NPP satellite. NASA had this image composed to monitor the wildfire situation in Brazil at the time. The red dots show areas of intense infrared radiation something that fires produce a lot of. The concentration of small red dots in Brazil and other countries are all the active fires in the rainforest. There are a couple somewhat unexpected red dots off the coast of Brazil. These can be easily explained as there are offshore natural gas platforms there which burn excess gas. The biggest dot, all by itself in the middle of the South Atlantic Ocean, is more difficult to explain. What is giving off so much heat out there? As far as anyone knows, there was nothing on fire there or really even anything physical in the area that could explain such energy. Could this be further evidence of energy orbs in the area? Is it possible that these are the tic-tac shaped energy fields produced by the theoretical Alcubierre drive? Perhaps. But the scientist who created this active fire product the data processing tool that examines the raw satellite data and identifies these fires, have an interesting and credible explanation for what the abnormal red dot is. And it could potentially explain the orbs over South America as well. And while this particular instance may have a natural explanation, the underlying data could prove immensely valuable in corroborating other potential UFO sightings. First. To understand the official explanation for the massive infrared signal over the ocean, we need a quick background on solar activity and the Earth's magnetic field. The Sun, quite obviously, is a very energetic place. As a result of this, things like the Sun's magnetic field are constantly in flux. Sometimes these disruptions in magnetic fields align in a way to cause a magnetic explosion outwards. This can send clouds of charged plasma particles streaming outwards in a corona mass ejection, or send bursts of intense electromagnetic radiation and smaller amounts of charged particles flying out as in solar flares. Luckily, when these charged particles are lined up to hit Earth, many of them are deflected by Earth's magnetic field, a field around Earth caused by the flow of iron and other magnetic elements within Earth's core. Not all particles are deflected, however. Some make it inside the atmosphere, where they travel to the poles and are dispersed in energy that we see as northern or southern lights. 
there is yet a third fate for some of these particles. Some remain trapped within Earth's magnetic field, like iron filaments stuck around a magnet. Instead of remaining stationary in the field like the iron fillings, the particles, protons and electrons, zip back and forth, pole to pole, so fast it approaches light speed. This belt of intense trapped particle radiation around Earth is known as the Van Allen Belt. Being within the belt would be deadly after a couple of hours, but thankfully, it is thousands of miles above Earth's crust. Generally well above our atmosphere, generally even above most satellites. Generally being the key word here. Because neither the Earth nor its magnetic field are a perfect circle, and the Earth being on a tilt, the Van Allen Belt gets relatively close within a couple hundred miles of the crust in a region called the South Atlantic Magnetic Anomaly. NASA and anyone involved in satellites are very interested in this area, as the high energy particles here can damage and interfere with electronics. If possible, satellites avoid the area. The Tsunami NPP satellite that took the picture of Brazil could not avoid the area while taking that picture, however. The scientists creating the fire data product were aware of this. They expected these particles to cause some false signals, but soon found many more than they would expect. They still chalked up all these unexpected signals to the particles in the South Atlantic Magnetic Anomaly and created algorithms to remove these signals from their datasets. These filters removed signals that were some combination of weak, over the ocean, or short-lived. The big red dot appearing in the 2017 NASA photo? The scientists say it is almost certainly due to particles in the South Atlantic Magnetic Anomaly, a signal that slipped through the filters. But what exactly are the infrared detectors seeing with these anomalous signals? Are the particles hitting the sensors directly, causing the readings? Or are they interacting with the atmosphere and giving off some sort of heat? The South Atlantic Anomaly averages around 300 miles above the Earth, about the same altitude at which our atmosphere begins. But the South Atlantic Anomaly can dip as low as 120 miles at times and places. It's a large area that stretches from the dot in the NASA photo to where the videos were recorded in Chile and Brazil. If a proton going near the speed of light collided with an atom within our atmosphere, that's essentially a collision on the scale of what's going on in the Large Hadron Collider. And the physics of these interactions might even be more energetic and spectacular. In 2011, it was confirmed that in addition to regular particles like protons and electrons being trapped in the magnetic field, the Van Allen Belt also contains antimatter particles zipping about from pole to pole. Perhaps when these particles reach our atmosphere, it can somehow create plasma orbs, which fly around until they dissipate. And this is perhaps what the NASA image detected, and what is shown in the videos. Adding to this theory, the day prior to the videos, a large two-hour solar flare happened, potentially priming the Van Allen Belt and the South Atlantic Anomaly with particles. The South Atlantic Anomaly has also been in the news recently, as its bounds have been changing more rapidly recently. The recent solar flare, along with the new shapes of the South Atlantic Anomaly, could be manifesting in visual ways we've not seen before. Now, this is just a theory. I feel it's a decent theory as several things happen to line up, but they could all be coincidental. I'd love to know what you think about it, but Regardless of your thoughts about these particular incidences, I'd like to call your attention back to that NASA image and the idea that other anomalies may have been filtered out of this and other images scientists are using. Wouldn't it be great if we had access to the raw data here? Instead of filtering out these anomalies, it would be incredibly interesting to see just the anomalies. Do such anomalies appear outside the South Atlantic Anomaly Zone? 
Do any detected anomalies line up with known sightings, such as the 2007 Nimitz Tic Tac encounter? Well, I have some good and some bad news. The good news is, yes, the raw data is publicly available. The bad news is, data only starts in 2013, and historical data doesn't seem to be available after 2018. As far as I know, no one has studied this data set for evidence of infrared anomalies consistent with what we might expect from anti-gravity devices leveraging large amounts of energy. That's not typically the type of research that gets scientific grants. It also seems when abnormal data is detected, it is quick to be written off. We see this when the unexpected number of abnormal fires detected was written off as almost certainly the South Atlantic anomaly without much follow-up. Additionally, this blog post from the Satellite Imagery blog shows us a picture where there are lots of odd artifacts, and the author speculates about whether these are lens flares, space junk, other satellites, or UFOs. Again, there's no follow-up onto what these objects really are. Regardless of what the answer is, it is incredibly unsatisfying to not have these anomalies fully explained. But making sense of anomalies within the data is a huge job. The data behind just a single day is many gigabytes. It took a team of scientists to create the data processing product used to identify the fire hotspots from the data. I've tweeted at To The Stars Academy, urging them to partner with VERS or study their data. This seems like a project that would be ripe for a team like theirs. Wouldn't it be a shame if we have further evidence of UFO craft in this data set, but no one bothered to look for it? In lieu of a full analysis of the data, these infrared satellites can still be useful to us UFO researchers. The last day or two of imagery is available on this website, linked below. If you ever have a sighting, I advise you to go here and look for any infrared imagery in your area. The time samples are not as granular as I'd hope, but you may luck out and see something abnormal around the time and area of your sighting. This would be incredibly useful corroborating evidence. Additionally, if you know of any incidents between 2013 and 2018 that would be worth investigating for infrared signatures, that would narrow down our search for abnormal data quite significantly. Please post the dates of any recommendations below. I'll try to dig more into the data myself, but it may be a long process. I encourage you to dig into and share this data set as well. I will be doing other parallel research and will be posting more about other UFO and disclosure topics soon. As always, thanks for watching Rather Be Squidding. If you haven't already, please subscribe so I can see you next time.